I think Fields and Lance are dead even for me. I have them. Uh, I have Fields seven overall and Lance eight overall, and I think there's a um, football field of difference between Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. And I love Justin Fields, but uh, I, I think Fields and Fields and Trey Lance are the type of prospects that come around, come around every year or two, in my opinion. Uh, but I like both of them a lot. I think they both have really high upside. Fields is more of a step in right away and play kind of guy. Trey Lance is the kind of guy who I think can turn into a Josh Allen prospect long term. Uh, but that's not to say Justin Fields doesn't have high upside. I absolutely think he does. Uh, I like both of them a lot, but I definitely think Trey Lance is about dead even with Justin Fields. That's part of why I think Fields is the pick at three. I think the hesitancy to commit to moving Jimmy Garoppolo – the initial comments that Jimmy Garoppolo is their starter, even when they traded up, they said that makes me really think that they're looking at taking Lance and realizing, Hey, he's not going to be ready to play week one. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Lance is the pick and I wouldn't be surprised if Jimmy G is the week one starter for the 49ers this year. Agreed for sure. On a scale of one to 10, based on his morbid comments, how done do you think Kyle Shanahan is with answering <laughs> questions about pick number three? <laughs> is Tim the, the highest weirdest conference of all time. <laughs> I love Shanahan. I think he's the man. I uh, mean, nobody wants to tip what they're going to do in the draft. And so when you make that big move up to number three, you're going to get asked lots of questions. You're eventually going to get caught in the lies and the smoke screen because you're overanalyzed. I think he's just over. He wants to coach football. He doesn't want to hold press conferences. But I mean, like, seriously, that was like the weirdest thing he could have said. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can't even guarantee any of us will be alive on Sunday. I saw I went on Twitter afterwards and people were quote tweeting that about like Kyle Shanahan's going to murder Jimmy G. <laughs> Wacko Flacco, I like that. Can we can we make that the official nickname for Joe Flacco? Yes. <laughs> Waka Flacco Flame. Uh, Philly RB says Fields will be better fact. So will Trey Lance, both better than Lawrence in my book. We shall but, see. We shall see. Yeah. It's and that's what I was just gonna say, Shane. That hey, good opinion. Don't call it fact. Nothing tonight will be fact. No matter what we do, no matter how pissed off you see this row of people get at the Eagles, nothing is fact until we get on the field in September. I bring so, this up every year. But in 2016, when the Eagles traded up and drafted Carson Wentz, I was pounding the table to trade back and take a quarterback by the name of Paxton Lynch. So <laughs> I like to think I like to think that I've come a long ways and learned a lot in terms of scouting, particularly the quarterback position. But there's so much guesswork, and there's so much in landing in the right spot. I mean, is Sam Darnold a terrible quarterback? Maybe. But would Patrick Mahomes have been any good in – New York with Adam Gase calling his plays? Absolutely not. And so, so much goes into scheme fit too, which is what it really starts to matter. Once you get past those top three, four guys, it's really all about scheme fit. Who's in a good situation to succeed? And so that's the most important thing. So I, uh, Zach Wilson is the pick at number two to the New York Jets as we expected. So we take him off the board. I had to go a little bit deeper in my big board in tier seven than, uh, than Trevor Lawrence at number one overall. Yeah. That's like, in, uh, I mean, I, I think we're supposed to be grading these picks a little bit, but it's an F for me. I mean, I, I uh, maybe a D like I, I just, I see the upside. I understand like Zach Wilson compared to Mac Jones. So I talked about this for a while, Zach Wilson going two as opposed to the idea of Mac Jones going three, Zach Wilson does have upside. I completely understand the upside. I just think that the downside is kind of being not really paid attention to. And I think it's tremendously, possible that he reaches that downside. I think there is a lot of Trubisky in his game, but Mac Jones, I just don't see that upside in. So I, I I'll, I'll give it a D plus or a D because if San Fran takes Mac Jones, I have to leave room for an F. Whoa, the New York Jets moving up in the draft to Minnesota. Oh, okay. Let me change this graphics is, here. This isn't great for me. So I have Elijah Vera Tucker under 16 and a half as my best bet today. Uh, I was kind of hoping that one of the Chargers or the Vikings would take Vera Tucker here at 13 or 14. Slater Felling really hurt in that, in my opinion, for that bet. Uh, so I would say that that bet's going to be a loser uh, if Minnesota trades out of 14 here. I can't imagine the Jets are trading up for an O-lineman, and I don't think New England or Arizona will be taking an O-lineman. So I do not think that bet will be cashing. Marky Guys, Mark says pay to the Vikings is my guess. That could be in play, but they're going to have to wait now. And then yeah, we got another comment. From the return of the prodigal that says I'm good with the pick, but with 
hindsight, seeing Suell fall to six, I'm thinking that ah. maybe staying put might have been the better option. I. I, I really like Suell, but it's hard to ignore that first round pick that you got trading back. So, I mean, oh, essentially yeah. you, you got a first round pick next year and a fourth round pick this year for the cost of a third and a fifth this year. And I think Absolutely. that's really good value for that move back. So I would like Suell um, at six. I would have been fine with that, but I would much rather that first rounder next year. Smith was the best player on the board overall for me at six overall. So clearly – I am very happy with uh, Smith, no matter, even if we had to give up the third round pick. I absolutely love Devonta Smith. I have him third overall. That's, and we got him at 10 and only had to do give we up know, the third. So. Do we know what the Jets gave up for this in this trade? I didn't see it yet. I didn't see it yet. Um, I'm assuming they gave up 23. Yeah, for sure. I, well, you know, I do have 34. I guess if they did like something crazy, but I, I can't imagine they didn't give up 23. I'm switching them on the picks and I can fix it if we need to. So the Jets, they've already filled quarterback. Um, They've got needs at corner, edge, running back, wide receiver. It'd be hard to believe they traded up for a wide receiver in this spot. It would be hard to believe they traded up for a running back in this spot because they were already one pick ahead of the Steelers who were likely to be the first running back team. Um, so I have to wonder if they are moving up for a corner like Caleb Farley or Greg Newsom, or if they're looking to take the first edge off the board here. And I mean, on, offensive line could also be a look here. They gave up the ninth most sacks per game last year. Uh, their center, Connor McGovern uh, and Dan Feeney, they both tied for the lead in pressures allowed by centers last year. So it's not good when the two guys you have competing for the job were the two worst centers in the league last year. Um, Alex Lewis, their offensive guard's a bad run blocker. Greg Van Roten uh, is a bad pass. I got that flipped as a bad run blocker. Lewis is a bad pass blocker. So you could maybe still see Elijah Vera Tucker come off the board here. Um, it, that could be a, something they traded up here to kind of shore up that interior offensive line, and it would certainly help out Mark's bet here. So we'll pull for that. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see that. But I, I feel like the Return- Jets, I don't know. I, I – I don't know what they'd be moving up for here. I really don't. I'm not even going to make a guess. I'll be back. Tucker feels like the value pick for me because I don't think you move up for a running back wide receiver or corner here. But So the return of the prodigal says uh, Suell is a lot pro bowl tackle, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think it ultimately just comes down to that value for trading back. If they stood at six, I mean, they might have taken Jalen Waddle. I don't think Smith would have been their pick at six. You could have probably seen uh, Suell. Uh, Quamar Hicks said, I heard Devontae Smith's IQ is a game changer. I hope it shows early. Report saying he can recall every play. That is one of the biggest things. Um, mm-hmm. His route running, technical ability, his ability to beat the press, and his football IQ are all real high uh, marks for him. And we do have uh, on the painted lines, we've got a full scouting profile written up for Devontae Smith along with a bunch of other guys. So you can go check that out. We've done some YouTube breakdowns as well. The return of the prodigal says, do the birds get a lineman to fill the center position tomorrow? Um, I don't know. There's some, I mean, there's some interior offensive line guys that I really like uh, for day two, like Creed Humphrey. Uh, he's one of my guys. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up the interior line here. You got uh, Landon Dickerson, Wyatt Davis, Creed Humphrey. Those are kind of all in that round two range. Josh Meyer is a round three range guy. Um, Quinn Myers I think is a guy. Quinn Myers is the guy who's been a second rounder lately. Yeah. I think the thing you get into with that is you want guys that can come in and make an impact. And a center is not going to make an impact this year because you have Jason Kelsey. But you're planning a rebuild, and you know Jason Kelsey is going to leave before long. And you don't know if uh, Isaac Sayamalo is going to be able to slide into center when that happens. Maybe he can. Maybe he can't. But Brandon Brooks is coming off of back-to-back Achilles injuries. And so if you get a guy that has center guard versatility, there's a better than not chance that he's going to play right guard at some point this season. And so I don't think it's a bad pick. I do think that center or that cornerback, though, cornerback and linebacker are much more pressing needs. And that's what I'd certainly expect to see tomorrow. Yeah, it's definitely – who knows, though? It could just – they could view this as a rebuild and they could just go best player available and – we don't know what their board is. You know, we don't know who's going to fall. We don't know what the medicals are going to be. It's going to be interesting to see where guys like a Caleb Farley, like a Jalen Phillips, 
uh, where those guys are going to end up because medicals are so unclear. We don't know how these teams are viewing them. So a Caleb Farley could fall to 37, and we could see us pass up on Farley to go get a different position, and that could feel a couple of weeks ago that would have felt crazy. But we really just don't. I think that especially like starting around 2021 overall, I think this draft could get really crazy. Yeah. Bryant says Mac Jones falling right into the lap of the Patriots, and he definitely is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's I think this year more than most years, and obviously we said this last year too because it was interrupted by COVID, but I think teams are going to view guys once you get to this point of the draft wildly differently um, just because no combine, lack of medical checks, things like that. Next year is a much more certain draft, and it's a much deeper draft because you have a lot of guys that went back that did not come out early this year because of the COVID stuff. And so next year is definitely a better year to have a lot of day three picks. Absolutely. The pick is in for the New York Jets, and it is Elijah Vera Tucker. So my bet hits. I'm a happy man. Uh, this has been a great draft so far. It's Smith. My, I'm doing pretty well on my prop bets. Oh, man, what a draft. 